But the values that take us further, and every church or every corporation or every business, they have certain values that help them, uh, you know, maintain uh, what they're going to be doing, the expectations of the people that work there, and we kind of have the same thing. So we went, we're doing, this is the third sermon in the series of four, and I was talking to Pastor Andrew, maybe we'll do five, but, you know, right now it's four, and, and so we want to lift, we're going to share our values and say, listen, this is what we believe in, this is what we stand for, this is uh, what we want to see uh, us mature into, if you will, as a church family. And so the first one we talked about was we value believing, do we have that slide? No? That's all right. We value believing the impossible is possible, that God is able to do super abundantly, far over and infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. That's our first sermon, right? And so God can do anything if we believe Him, and we just believe, and he, we can do whatever. Whatever your dreams are, what is your dreams? What is your hopes? What do you want? God will do above that for you if you just trust Him, amen? As we're believing that in our church family and hopefully in yourself. Then last week we talked about we, we value loving everyone as family. Seeing everyone with value, not showing partiality, it's our pleasure, or it's, it was, it's our pleasure to extend hospitality to everyone, amen? So that may, may and we change, and, uh, Pastor Andrew challenged us, you know, maybe invite some people to your house, maybe talk about Jesus a little more at work, you know, and show that God, God's love, that God, everybody in our church family, and I shared last week that this is my, that was my favorite sermon part of the series, because I believe God has told us to have every people group represented in Madison, Wisconsin, to be part of our church family. And I just looked over the congregations today, even just we see different uh, cultures, different um, nations represented. I love that. I want to see more of that, amen. And so I'm, I'm excited that we are one big family in God's eyes. And I look at all the unbelievers as pre-family people, right? <laughs> they're unbelievers, but they're eventually going to be part of our family, right? And we'll talk about that next week, how we're going to have a desire to see the lost come to Jesus. And I'm so excited about that. This week, we're going to talk, talk about we value... Do we have that? Yeah, there you go. We value serving with outrageous generosity that Jesus stripped himself of all righteousness, dignity, to serve even to the point of death. We value serving with outrageous generosity that Jesus stripped himself of all righteousness, deity, to serve even to the point of death. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you looked down on this earth and didn't see a bunch of sinners and no good people, but God, you saw us and sent your son to die for us. What a crazy thing to do, I think. But God, you did it because you loved us. And Fathers, we seek you today to serve you with all our heart, with all our soul, with everything within us, God, outrageously for your kingdom. Father, I ask your blessings on this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. With outrageous generosity, we're going to serve the Lord. We say, well, what does that look like? Well, I'm going to share with you a scripture out of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. It's a Macedonian church. And the Macedonian church, if you have a, know a little bit of history about the Macedonian church, the Macedonian church was really a poor uh, area. Uh, they didn't have much. Uh, they didn't live they have, and they, they didn't have much wealth. They were they lived very poorly. If you think of the poorest nation in the world today, that was the Macedonian church. Amen. So let's look at Second Corinthians chapter uh, eight, and I'm going to read with the first couple of verses. It says, "And now, brothers, we want you to know about about the grace." that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most service, severe trials, their overflowed joy, their extreme poverty, welled up with rich generosity. Everybody say rich generosity. Rich, rich generosity. generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even on their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the saints. 
Look at verse 5. And they did not do as we expected, but they gave uh, themselves first to the Lord, and then to us in keeping with God's will. So we urged Titus, since he had earlier made a beginning, to bring along, bring also to completion this act of grace on their part. But just as you excelled in everything, in faith, in speech, and in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. So here we see this church, the Macedonian church. They didn't have much, but there was a mission that was beyond themselves. There was something more that needed to be completed. And they know that churches all over this area were collecting money to give to the poor, the needy uh, saints that were being persecuted. And so this, this poor area, this what, it amazes me, the Word of God covers everybody. It covers the, the, the ones that have wealth and those that have a lot of things, and then they talk about these poor people. And they gave, they collected money, they collected for themselves, and when the apostles came to get, receive the gift that they were going to give, they were amazed. It was an amazing gift. It, was, it, it blew them away. And they thought, wow, they, they see in their hearts that they first gave themselves to the Lord. That's pretty amazing. They first saw that they gave themselves to the Lord. They gave themselves to the mission that the apostles had. And then they said, listen, I'm going to collect. I don't know what they did. I don't know if they had, you know, if it was a family that only made a couple hundred dollars a month and they gave $200 that month to give to them. I don't know what that was. Or was it a person that had a lot and gave a bunch? I don't know what happened, but they gave to the Lord and it impressed the apostles because they were outrageous in their giving. They went beyond what they thought they could do, way beyond their, their capability, and they gave to the Lord, right? Isn't that what outrageous uh, generosity is? Is that I'm going to do what I can do, but I'm going to do more, right? And I think we're going to challenge them. Remember the last few weeks we had a scale, 1 to 10, right? And we're going to do that today again. So on a scale of 1 to 10, let's say 10 being Jesus. You're giving your life for somebody, okay? And 1 being you're just really not generous at all. All right, and we're going to say, so you have a scale, 1 to 10. So look at yourself now. Am I really a very generous person? Maybe you give. Maybe See, I think that everything we own is God's. How many believe that? Everything that we have, all our wealth, all our possessions, <laughs> all our knowledge, everything we have is the Lord's. Because he gave it to you. If you're not there yet, we'll talk about that another time. Right? But everything you have, every ability, everything you thought, every, God has given you everything. So let's say you say, everything that I have is God, so I'm going to give whatever God requires of me anytime, and I'm going to go beyond. When I see a need, man, I'm just going to lavish some love on people. I'm going to, I see a person hurting, I'm going to cry with them, I'm going to be with them, I'm going to sacrifice my time, and I'm just going to hang out with them. Maybe you're on the 8 or 9 scale, all right? Or maybe you're like some of us that, we, well, on occasionally, we kind of, you know, we kind of do it. I mean, we know we should, and then we know when the Holy Spirit tells us to do something extra, and we kind of say no once in a while. That's probably some of us, right? Like, you know you should do this. I should go help that person. Uh, maybe I see, you know, I'm on my way to work, but I see a guy with a flat tire or a lady with a flat tire. I should stop and help him, but I'm just like, yes, Lord, bless them, and you just keep on going, right? Maybe you're not so generous at that moment. <laughs> so you say, you know, I didn't see the need, so you say, like, well, maybe you're maybe a four or five, right? Or maybe you're here today and you never, ever thought about helping anyone but yourself. You're a believer, but like, hey, I'm just, I'm just going through life. You don't know my problems. You don't know my situation. You know, I got all these issues in my life. So, but you never really extended any type of generosity or hospitality to anybody. So you just kind of like, you're just hanging out. Like, you come to church and you're saying, uh, yeah, I'm here, serve me, right? Nobody here today is like that, I know. But I just give an example like that, okay? So on your piece of paper that you have, would you? Put a scale one to ten, and I want you to grade yourself. All right, and then I'm gonna collect them up afterwards to see what you did. No, I'm not. I'm just gonna. <laughs> and you're like, no, don't say that. Um, but I want to. Let's just grade yourself, but be honest, you know, because God already knows where your number is, right? Now we we're gonna see for ourselves where we're at. Why do we? Why is this so important? I believe that we're gonna. We need to. Uh, in everything we do, we need to. Uh, and, and I believe a value of our church is that we serve with outrageous generosity. So what does that look like? It means that we're going to do above and beyond what we're capable of doing for His kingdom. 
And when we do it, we're not going to say, hey, look at me. We're going to say, look at what Jesus did. Amen. 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 And as we lift up Jesus in that, he says, if you, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto, not you, or Capital City Church, or anywhere else, but we'll draw people to Jesus. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Draw people to Jesus. So God doesn't, like the Macedonian church, he doesn't want us to just do what we can't, are capable of doing. He wants us to do above and beyond what we're capable of doing. Tina and I have been in ministry for quite a long time. Actually, I think we started right after we got saved. We were working with the two and three year olds in our, in our church in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And we loved it. I mean, every Wednesday we'd go, right? But then as God called us to do more, we knew that it was God calling us because it was beyond our capability. Yeah. Right? When we left to plant a church, help plant a church, in, in, and we left California to help plant a church in North Carolina, it was more than I was able to do on my own. I know it's God. And, and I gave, we gave, and God blessed us. Amen? And I believe God wants to bless us that we go further <coughs> in our generosity for Him. So what does outrageous generosity look like? It's more than you're capable of doing. Yeah. It's more than you can think you can do. God will do it through you. Amen? Pastor Andrew's going to come, and he's going to challenge us with three points to help us look at being outrageous for God, and so we can do more for his kingdom. Amen? It's all for his glory. Come on, let's give Andy a hand.
It, it paints this beautiful picture. If we look at Acts chapter 2, you can write this down. Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47, it talked about the, the action, the living, how the early church lived. And some of the things that they did, they, they devoted themselves to, some, to the gathering of the believers, to the preaching of the word. So whenever the apostles were preaching, hey, they wanted to be there. They wanted to hear what was going on. And then whenever they, they were outside of that time of gathering, they would meet in each other's homes. They would eat dinner. They would discuss, hey, do you remember what Paul said on Sunday? Do you remember what Peter said? I mean, that was really good. That was encouraging. How are we going to live this out? They were meeting together regularly, discussing things. But then it goes even a step further. It wasn't just that they devoted themselves to their morning uh, gatherings. It wasn't just that they devoted themselves to eating food with one another. They devoted to sharing everything that they had. They said that nobody lacked anything. And actually, those that had, they would give. They would give it away. They would sell it and offer it to the local church, so that the local church could distribute it to other people that were in need. And nobody had need. I said, "Wow." I mean, that, that, they would think about this. What would it take for us to get this mindset? To have this mindset that nothing that we own is ours. That everything that we have is a gift from God. Whether that be finances, we can talk. We can take this down the finance road, right, and say every financial blessing that I have it doesn't come from me. It comes from my heavenly Father who blesses me. You know, every talent that I have, every gift, every every uh, ability that has been given to me, everything it, it isn't mine. It's actually been God given it to me. It's a talent that God has given to me to use for His glory. So this is what what happens when we talk about serving without righteous generosity. People get a picture, a tangible picture, of what it looks like to be in the kingdom of God. Where nothing is lacking. I remember the first time I was, uh, one of the earlier times, I got married to, to Rachel. And Rachel is an extremely generous person. I mean, I think if, if it weren't, if, if, if it were just for Rachel, then we would live like on the street and did everything that we could earn. would be like, give it away. And I said, you know what, we need to make sure that our, that you get the home and, and, and heat and things like that. And, and Close, but but I've been learning. She's been challenging me in our in our marriage. And hey, how generous! And I remember there was a, a moment when we were in West Lafayette, and the first time uh, I got a I got a decent sized tax return. You know, like you, 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 it's like a like a bonus. We had been giving as missionaries, we're self employed, and so we you know would pay our quarterly taxes. And then uh, I found out one year that I had given a lot more than what I needed to. I was like, hey, I just want to make sure my bases are covered. But it came time February, and I, and I got all the taxes done early, and, and uh, I knew this check was coming. And I remember getting a, a, a message, my actually my phone text messaged me every time like a big deposit comes in my account. And so this was a couple thousand dollars I got deposited in my account. And I remember pulling into the uh, pulling into a parking lot uh, right by the, it was a uh, Menards down there in uh, West Lafayette. I pulled in and I was looking at it. I was like, I don't know if this is the right number, so I was calling a couple different things and making sure everything was situated and that was the right number. And as I'm looking at this, as I'm like marveling, oh right, I mean I could get a new TV, I could do a couple different things that we've been wanting to do around the apartment. And as I like I was looking at my phone on the steering wheels over here and then I'm looking out on the parking lot and there was a a lady holding a sign that was saying that she that she was praying for her blessing. Would you be an answer to my prayer? Up, you know, I'm like, I'm like sitting here, like this is a great. I mean, like this is awesome, right? So I get to, and the Holy Spirit just reminds me, right? Here we go, those moments. This is such a great moment, and then you get this. Are you, a, are you an answer to our prayer? That's what the sign said. We've been praying. Are you an answer to our prayer? So, well, maybe Holy Spirit. So I go and talk to, I go and talk to her, and she said, "Well, my family have been living. They've been explaining her situation." And uh, I said, you know, if, if you and your family meet me here, uh, I will I will come. And we did, my family's just been blessed. And what we've been blessed is we we learned that everything I'm blessed with is, is to be a blessing to others, right? And so uh, the next yes. day we yeah. we met yeah. with them, and, and their their family came. They had an old they had an old um, van that was kind of like a little uh, motorhome kind of situation, and came in. And, and uh, we're talking. I said, "All right, let's let's go." And so I took them. They, the kids they had shoes that were worn out in the soles, and so we went and got shoes and and got uh, the kids some clothes. And and then I asked the, the mother. I said, the, "You have the jacket she was more wearing was all worn out and all dirty and had holes in it." And I said, "You know what? What jacket would you want?" And we're going to the store. And at one point uh, or another, she she tells me she says, uh, "Can I put my jacket back so that we can get more things for the kids?" I said. 
no, we're gonna, you're going to get the jacket, and the kids will get more things. And so, you know, uh, I was able to, to bless them, and then, and then um, they had a propane tank and needed some propane. Anyway, I got the propane, got it, and blessed them. And, and it was at the moment I, uh, I remember that first thought of that's a lot of money. That's a that can, that can do a lot of things. <laughs> I said, everything that you've been blessed with is to be a blessing. Amen. I remember the original promise of, of Abraham that we will, be a, we will be blessed to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. That's right. and whether it be our finances, our gifts, our talents, whatever we have, it's not our own. It's for His use, for His glory. And if we get that, if we make that our mindset, just as Christ did, make that our mindset, man, everything I have is not my own. Man, it's gonna, we're going to be able to see the tangible presence of God. We're going to see the kingdom of God. We're going to see Jesus. And people around us are going to be touched by that. We're talking about this community right down the road on Seiko Terrace. Man, they're going to be touched by the fact that we're going to say, everything we own is not our own. My time is not, it's not mine. It's, it, I'm here to serve you. Man, I can make a pancake breakfast. I can, I can help you clean your apartment. I can, I can do these things because the things that I have, the talents I have, the abilities that I have, and even the finance that I have, they're not my own. It's for Jesus. Amen. The second point um, that we have is that exactly that when we are when we serve with outrageous generosity, it gives others a tangible expression of Jesus. I talked to different people doing a college ministry and different from different backgrounds, and they say, you know, the hardest thing about this God thing is that I can't touch him, I can't feel him. You know, some of, some of my friends are scientists; they're they're doing different studies, and they say, you know, I, I I wish if I could touch it, if I could like experiment on it. You know, I, I, I know that God is real, right? <laughs> and I thought, you know, it doesn't work that way, right? But, but if we were to serve with outrageous generosity, you would give others a tangible expression of Jesus. They can actually see Jesus. They can see the kingdom by the way we serve them, by the way we give outrageously to them beyond their imagination. This is exactly what happens in Acts chapter 2. So you write, you wrote that down earlier. Let's, let's turn there. In Acts chapter 2, as, as people were, were, were loving on the Lord and, and receiving the words of encouragement and studying the word and getting together and eating and, man, they were sharing everything they had with one another and nobody was in need. This amazing thing happened. In Acts chapter 2, verse 47, it says this. Uh, we'll, even, we'll start, I'll start in part of uh, 46. It says this. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. I mean, I, I could imagine that environment just a, a full of generosity and love and praise. And, I mean, glad and sincere hearts. They were eating together. And verse 47 says this. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. They were enjoying. These are the people of God. Enjoying the favor of all the people. Now, I mean, we don't have to look too far in, in our current environment, 2017, in Madison, Wisconsin, to know sometimes if we, if we say we're the people of God, we don't always enjoy the favor of all people. Right. But these were people, they were, they were having such love, such, such sharing of themselves and, and everything they had, that people actually, they were enjoying favor. And in the second part of that verse, and the Lord was adding to their number daily, those who are being saved. Yes. So as we're living this now, as we're living this value of outrageous generosity, serving one another with outrageous, not only in, in this church body, but in this family, man, our needs are going to be met. But then people around us in our neighborhoods, their needs are going to be met. Their, their need for love, their need for acceptance, their needs for, for even a cleanup, their need for organization. Some of you guys have organi organizing minds and, and things like that that people need some help with. That they need some encouragement and, okay, how do I get my life in order? And some of you guys with those manager mindsets are going to know, hey, I can help this person take some steps in this direction. Man, you're going to use the talents, the gifts, the brain, the abilities that you've been given to serve those who are around you. And guess what? We're going to gain favor with all those people, and God is going to add to our number daily those who are seeing Jesus by our expressions, and they're getting saved. They said, I want what they want. What they have is something different. What they have with one another. I mean, the way they treat me is different than any other person's ever treated. What is it? And you know what? That's our opportunity to say. It's Jesus. And because we know uh, uh, Jesus said he served me with outrageous generosity. I mean, he, 
He didn't think of himself something to be gained, something to be grasped, but he served me. He stripped himself of all his rightful dignity, and he served me. And so I just want to express that to you, that our greatest generosity that I receive, I'm going to give it to you. And when we have that value, people see the kingdom. They see Jesus. They can touch him. He becomes real. More than just words, and more than just things that we say. And when we do that, God will add to our number daily. I believe, I, this isn't just about like a description. I think it's something that can happen daily. People can get saved because they see oh, Jesus yeah. by our righteous generosity. So first it is, we've got we to gotta understand that nothing, uh, nothing, we have to have a mindset that nothing we own is ours. Secondly, we've got, when we give uh, our righteous generosity, when we serve, it gives others a tangible expression, something they can touch it and then say, I, I've experienced Jesus in this moment. And number three is the, just a warning, maybe, but an encouragement also, that serving with outrageous generosity, it could count, cost us our life. Yeah. Let's look at this. John chapter 15, verse 13, talking about Jesus, says, uh, Jesus saying this, that greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. We've talked about this a few different times, I think, as a church. Probably that when uh, we give unto the Lord, sometimes it costs ourselves of our comfort. Sometimes we've got to... I really like who I am. I really like my daily routine. I really like what I got and, and the organization that I have in my life. But when we step out and we say, you know what, we're going to love, we're going to serve with outrageous generosity, it may cost me some of the things that I enjoy. Some of the pleasures that I have, some of the comforts that I have, it may cost me those things. We know Jesus, to Jesus it took a real, uh, this statement is more than just a, a figurative thing, and more than just the talents and gifts and abilities, but it goes beyond that. In Philippians chapter 8, he said this, he, found in the, he was found, Jesus, in the appearance of man, but he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. The death that Jesus died was for the sake of the world, would be saved, would be redeemed, would be made whole. When we set our mind on being servants with outrageous generosity, it may cost us our life, yeah. our pleasures, our enjoyments. But it's worth it for the sake of others receiving a tangible expression of who Jesus is. It's worth it to know that my sacrifice will bring somebody else life. Jesus was right at this, saying in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, that he did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So we have sometimes a challenge, and it challenges our culture, it challenges who we are, because, you know, in our lives we're always going towards a goal, always going towards a better, always looking for the next best thing for us and our families, and I believe fully that God would want us to use our gifts and our talents to expand our abilities in our workplace. However, God is also asking us, at the same time as He's asking us to produce in ourselves these great and marvelous things, these talents that we have, He's also asking us, would you give of yourself with outrageous generosity so that others may have life? But this was Jesus' whole mission, that He would serve even to the point of death, because he knew that his life would be the ransom for many. Kind of goes along with this, this value of serving with outrageous generosity is thinking about somebody else higher than ourselves. We covered that last week when we talked about our goal as a church, our value as a church is to love everybody as family. Love requires that we would think the best that we want for ourselves for the other person. Serving with outrageous generosity goes along those same lines that we would think, what is the best that I would want for myself? And how can I help the other person receive that? Whether I talk about it being my kids, being my spouse in my home, being the co-workers in my workplace, being the neighbor next door, being the local church, the people that are sitting here with me. Amen. See, giving and serving isn't just something we... Uh, giving and serving is something that we do. But generous, being outrageously generous, is something who we... And this, is, this is who we are. We are a generous people because we have received outrageous generosity. Now we serve with the same generosity that has been given to us. What, 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 
could this possibly look like? You know, we talk about a, a value, and we say we, we want to value serving with outrageous generosity. What, what could it look like? What if it looked like all of our gifts and talents? You know, some, some of us in here have been saying, you know what, I, I can sing a little bit. And, and so we've been enjoying people saying, you know what, I'm going to serve with outrageous generosity. I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the gifts that God's given me, and I'm going to serve the local body. And so now, when, not now, just, as I serve with outrageous generosity, as I sing unto the Lord, Man, people that come in here, they experience, they experience Jesus because I'm using my gifts and my talents to serve in, the, in, in music. And some of you, you guys are like amazing greeters. Like you love, man, that, that hospitality we talked about last week, you love greeting. And you know what? When you serve in the local church, when you serve at Campus of the Church and you greet at the door, you get to be a, a, a tangible expression of acceptance to all those who come in the doors. Man, you greet them and you come in, you, you got a big old smile. Man, I love to see you here. Thank you for coming to Campus City Church. Here's a bullshit <coughs> welcome. Here's a great seat. We've got the best seats in the house for you. When we serve at, at the local church like that, man, people get to experience Jesus. Man, when we serve, you know, you know what, I, I may not make a good uh, upfront person, but you know what, I know, how to, I know how to type on the computer, I know how to move a mouse around and, and help the slides go up, or, you know, when we get to do that, man, people get to experience Jesus when we do that. Man, when we think about our neighbors and we think about this apartment complex, this is what I, I'm excited about this, that we get to start putting some hands and feet to this value of serving with outrageous generosity at the Sago Terrace apartments where people, the, the marginalized people of Madison are somehow, a whole bunch of them are in this one apartment building. They're tired aged people, internationals from around the world, uh, refugees, the poor, the, the mentally uh, challenged. They're all, they're all represented in this one apartment complex. And you know what? God opened a door for us to say, you know what? Would you come and serve? Would you come and be my hand? Would you come be my tangible expression to this uh, apartment complex? And you know what? As pastors, we said, you know what? Our church can do it. We believe our church can value that apartment complex. We believe our church can value them and serve them with outrageous generosity. And as we do that, that we're going to see life change and transform. That we're going to see some people move out of, uh, out of some situation that they're in. We're going to see them love like they've never been loved before. We're going to see some people change. And we're believing that not just in their physical life, in their everyday life, but they're going to, in their spiritual life, going to receive something from Jesus by the way that we choose to serve them with outrageous generosity. We can do this. We can do this because it's been done to us. In Isaiah chapter 32, verse 8, this is a New Living Translation, but Isaiah 32, verse 8, New Living Translation says this, Generous people plan to do generous. Generous people plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. Calling, we're calling the church. We're calling the church to say, would you come and plan to do what is generous? You know, maybe you say, Andrew, I'm not available every week to, to greet at the door, but you know what? Once a month, I could, I could be a greeter. You know what? I, I don't know if I could do it every week, but, you know, once a month, I could, I could help move the sound back and forth. I don't know if I could do it every week, but I could, I could start with once a month being able to upload the videos online. I, I don't know if I could do it every week, but... And once a month, I could I could count the offering and help in that in that aspect. I don't know if I can do it every week, but you know I could once a month arrange a Saturday that I can go to the Sago Apartments and I could help them with their pancake breakfasts or with their movie nights or or plan a game night for the community. I, I don't know if I can do it all the time, but what can we do to start to plan outrageous generosity, outrageous service? I believe in 2017, we're going to go further than we did in 2016, both in our individual lives as we plan to be, to serve others with outrageous generosity, and as a local church as we plan to serve others with outrageous generosity, we're going to go forward. Because if we, if, if our lives start looking more and more like Jesus, other people are going to see Jesus in us, and they're going to want that. They're going to want it. It's so different and what this world has to offer. This morning, uh, we took a time to evaluate. We said, let's look at a scale, one to, one to ten, where, where am I at? And our prayer is that we would be motivated as a church to take a step forward. 
If we're at a one, let's take, let's let's get a two. And if we're at a three, let's, let's go to the next level. Let's let's go let's go for this. Let's value this. Let's let it become who we are. This morning, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that that we would get this. That that God would give us grace to look more like Him, to serve with outrageous generosity. Just as Jesus stripped Himself from all rightful dignity mm -hmm. and served even to the point of death. Oh, yeah. And when we do this as a church, when we have everything in common, when we're meeting each other's needs, we're, God's going to add to you. Yeah. Those who are seeing Him and are getting saved. Can you believe that with me? Amen. Why don't we stand this morning? Can we say this? We believe. We believe. We believe. That we can serve, that we can serve with outrageous generosity. With outrageous generosity. We value, we value serving, serving with outrageous generosity. With outrageous generosity. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning that you are calling us forward. That you're calling us to be your church here in Madison. Father, you're calling us to be families that serve with outrageous generosity. That as fathers, we serve our children with outrageous generosity. Lord, as mothers, we serve our children with outrageous generosity. Father, in our marriages, and we, we, we are in oh, a competition, Father, to outserve one another with outrageous generosity. Father, the family of God, as a church, we're, we are determined to serve one another with outrageous generosity. God, and when we look at Madison, we look at our community, we look at our neighbors, and we look at the Sago apartments, and we say, you know what, God? We're willing to serve with outrageous generosity. God, I pray a blessing on each individual today. God, that they would receive grace to live this out. Yes. Uh, this is, would it just be a, a, a good sermon or a good sermon series, but Father Lord, that we would truly receive from you what we need to live this out. God, our gifts, our talents, Father, our abilities, our finances, they belong to you. Lord, help us, Father, to give them as freely, Jesus, as you gave your life for us. Strengthen us, God. Lord, build our trust up. God, build our trust that, God, that you, as we give away, Father, that you would supply all of our needs and all of our, uh, all of our, our needs would be met by you. Encourage us in this, God. Father, I thank you that you have designed us to be a people who are blessed to be a blessing. Lord, let this truly be stamped on our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Before we go this morning, there's an amazing part of this message is understanding that not only are we able to serve with outrageous generosity, but we have been served with outrageous generosity. That Jesus took it upon himself to take the penalty that, was, that we owe, and he paid it all. He paid it all for us. And so this morning, I don't know where everybody stands with God. If they said, you know what, God, I, I'm all in. God, I, I belong to you. Father, I, I receive your lordship in my life. But this morning we have an opportunity to respond to this outrageous, generous gift. Jesus gave his life for us, that our sins would be totally wiped away, that we would stand in right standing with God our Father, that we would become his true son and daughter. And so this morning there's an invitation to respond. An invitation to say, you know what, God, I receive the forgiveness of your son. I desire your leadership in my life. I surrender, God, to you. And so this morning, if that's you, you said, Andrew, today I make a decision to receive the forgiveness of Jesus and to make him the leader of my life. You say, Andrew, I want to make that decision today. I would invite you to raise your hand. It's a sign to me and a sign to God to say, you know what, I receive the forgiveness of Jesus. I make you the leader of my life today. If that's you, raise your hand this morning.
the, the two, the, the Bible says that we confess with our mouths and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, that we are saved. Different churches, maybe there's a certain prayer that's praying, but I want to encourage you that there's no specific prayer that needs to be prayed. However, it's the attitude of our hearts and our words to the Father. So this morning, I want to pray a prayer asking the Father to forgive me and to make him the leader in my life. And if you said this morning, I want to make that, I want to have that decision, I want to make the decision, I encourage you to pray a prayer similar to mine in your heart to the Lord this morning. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for the way that you offered your life in place of the sins that I've committed. Father, I ask that you would forgive me and wipe me clean from every sin, from every wrongdoing, from every wrong motive in my heart. Jesus, I ask that you would take your rightful place as leader and king of my life. I submit to you. Father, I ask now for grace, for strength, to walk this commitment out. That all of my days, I would walk in right standing with you. Thank you, Father. For accepting me as your son or as your daughter. May my life reflect who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe if you prayed that prayer, prayed a similar prayer this morning, that you begin a journey towards following Jesus, toward an outstanding life with him as your Lord. And if you pray that prayer for the first time or, or again, just repentance, uh, I would encourage you to come and talk to one of the pastors and, and pray and believe that God's going to continue this work of salvation in your life. This morning, uh, you may have a moment. You may say, you know, I want to I pray some more. These altars are going to be open. But I just want to pray a blessing over your week that you would go and that you would go in the favor of the Lord. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that each member of this body would be covered by your grace, would walk in your favor, would receive your blessings. And Father Lord, as we walk, Father Lord, may we walk with boldness. Father, proclaiming the gospel, living for you, Father, and making disciples. Father, I thank you for everyone represented here, and Lord, and those who are at home this morning. God, I pray, God, that our lives, Father, we reflect who you are in everything we do. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. I pray that this week you would go forth and make disciples. If you have, I want to take a moment and pray, go ahead and take time to pray this morning, but you are formally dismissed.